And we're going to begin with Jamie Yukis, who is about 100 miles south of here in Charleston. Jamie, Charleston's really been right in the thick of it. They have. Conditions are starting to improve. That's the good news. The bad news, we're getting our first look at the damage. And you can see there's a lot of debris, including trees that have toppled into roadways. You can hear saws up and down the streets working to clear this as fast as possible. Dorian's eye closed within 55 miles of Charleston, bringing with it gusts of more than 70 miles an hour and almost a foot of rain. Most businesses boarded up downtown, except for coffee shop One Broad Street, where employees took refuge on the second floor of this concrete Civil War era building. So you stayed here last night? Yeah, 10th City, One Broad Street. Why? Uh, the storm was looking kind of rough and didn't want to drive back over the bridge last night. This was always the greatest concern in Charleston. Flash flooding. You can see the waters are above my knee. And while we may have gotten a break from storm surge, it's still raining and has been for quite some time. Down power lines and exploding transformers left almost 200,000 residents without power in South Carolina. The governor urged people to stay home. Fallen trees and debris littered much of Charleston, but there were those who refused to hunker down. What yeah. possessed you guys to grab your fishing pole and come out? My I love, I guess, my love for fishing, I guess. Yeah. yeah, it's been my dream to do it in a hurricane. I just talked to power crews here on scene. They tell me that they will be working 24 hours a day to get power restored. But with 200,000 people without, that's going to take some time. Nora? All right, Jamie, thank you so much.